Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and today we are looking at the indigenous Carolinian people as ocean voyaging people. And here to share his knowledge and his thoughts today are Ramon Angailan Debadeb. Some of you know him as a longtime employee of the Sinai Public School System and also 17 years as one of our elected representatives in the legislature. He's also the uh, president of the Sinai Canoe Federation. And he's been certified by the CNMI Superior Court to serve as an expert on Rfalawash customs related to land matters. Uncle Ray, thank you for coming and sharing with us today. Thank you, Kat, for inviting you and I kind of got onto this topic after our recent uh, panel discussion put together by the Supreme Court about customs and traditions uh, related to law. And uh, the more you were sharing after that, the more I, I could see that you had some interesting perspectives on um, the Carolinians as uh, as we relate to the ocean. And uh, even though we can't exhaust all the topics today, I wanted to give you an opportunity opportunity to share. Um, when we were chatting uh, earlier, you kind of um, have a position that to know a people, there are three pillars whereby a person is divine, uh, defined. Can you share with us your thoughts on that? You know, like many cultures, right, respect is, is, the, is paramount uh, and how we do things and how we are shaped and how we come to uh, develop our uh, values, uh, practices, traditional practices. And within the confines of what I've uh, learned through my great-grandparents, my parents, uh, and also a lot of uncles and aunties, I've, I've learned that there are basically three three fundamental principles of what uh, identifies uh, people, more specific, identifies us as the European terminology, Carolinian. And those three fundamental principles are land, language, and people. And basically these are in, integrated, in their, they cannot be separated once it has to be combined. If one is not there, it's almost like the three-legged stool. If one is not part of the discussion or what uh, values people create, then it's going to be difficult to even communicate to other culture. And for example, if we're talking about Chamorro, the first thing that comes to mind, at least for me, is that where the Chamorros came from, that's where the land. And of course, it's the people, right, the Chamorros. And then you have the language. The language shapes everything within this, uh, uh, from the different uh, people. The three fundamental principles cannot be separated, otherwise it's not going to be defined. We know for a fact that the Carolinians are people out from the outer islands who traverse or travel the United States continental size of the United States of this Micronesian region were from the outer islands. We call we call the outer islands basically the Repagulwar. Pagulwar are the reefs where the people of the outer islands of Micronesia, so in essence, were 
what I define and also learn from our masters, the nomads or maybe gypsies of this Micronesian ocean. But those are the fundamental uh, principles of peoplehood, their land, their language, and the people identifying. Related to that, as you were pointing out, really for the Carolinians, our quote-unquote land is the ocean. Correct. You shared uh, that one of the things you learned from late Master, v Master Navigator Mao Piello when you were young is he said that the land is only an extension of our canoe as a people. Correct. Yeah. What is the significance of the ocean to the Rafalwash people and their culture? Let me respond to the land is really an extension of our canoe because we're ocean people and so we live and die with the ocean and for us it's accepting uh, whether we live or die in the ocean that's normal uh, but the significance of the connectivity to what it is to our ocean is that we don't look at the ocean like many folks who say, right, it, it connects us. So others, maybe outsiders, I'm going to say the Western concept of the water, that's not how we see uh, the water. We see water is part of us. Uh, you may not see it, but there's land underneath the water. <laughs> when there's that solid rock. And that's why the Repahul wash, where the wash, uh, wash in our language is the reefs. Pahul is the cut, the remaining part of lands that you see out and you see from the ocean. And then the Pahul wash are the smaller pieces of land. And to the extent that even navigation identifies those lands that you don't see, if one of it is very common in our language now, you might be using it, but it is really a land, and it's called, basically we're, we're now heading into navigation, right? Metawal Wall. Metawal Wall is a reef. A reef that connects us. So, do we see it when you're sailing? Yes, you. Yes, you do. You see it by way of the five senses that you have, and the five senses. And I, I also covered a little bit of in our uh, conversation with the courts. I also covered a little bit of the sacredness of our head. What do you mean by you can see the reef that's underwater with your five senses? So you, if you're going to talk about navigation, then you're feeling the ocean movement. And so you know that there is land or a rock or something down there. And, and for us, we call it Metawalwal. That's the direction that tells us to go from that part of the uh, navigational point to another navigational point heading north because in our navigational uh, system it's not only to the it, it's not only uh, Metawalwal it, it goes beyond to Japan that's the connectivity I'm saying that it is an extension of us you might not see it but you see it by your feeling, by the five other senses. So if you're blind, then you can still see it by either your feeling or you can maybe smell. The five senses, it gives you the language. The motion of the ocean, pretty much. That's yeah. an, a language and what I was talking about. Um, we mentioned uh, the late Papa Mao and really the gift of sharing the traditional uh, knowledge of the Carolinian for uh, navigation with uh, the rest of the world. 
and you also mentioned this word or this word these words refalawash people of our land remetau people of the far or the deep and repulosh 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 it's almost like these ways of defining people if i'm understanding you correctly are related to where they are in the ocean in a way yes. like refalawar people of our land means okay we're in this big land like saipan mm-hmm. that's what we call ourselves people of the, our mm-hmm. land re metal people of the deep ocean right. far away in the ocean right. And a, am I understanding you correct correctly? Yeah, re basically is a reference. Re means the people of. Right. Or of that offspring. Re. Mm-hmm. Re Morales. Mm-hmm. We the Morales is from the Marianas. People from the Marianas. Re span, the people from Japan. Mm-hmm. We use that. And when we say re pagulwar. Us is Rafalwash. Everybody uses the Rafalwash. Who are the Rafalwash? The Rafalwash is really Rafale. So the people of that land. So when we come to the CNMA, when we go to Chuk, when we go to the different region, the people there are Rafalwash. To that, themselves. To themselves. Yes. Falawash. Mm-hmm. Falu means the land. Mm-hmm. Falawash means it's us together. So it's mm-hmm. the people of that land. So the Remeralis are, in essence, the Rafalwash of the people north. Us were Rafalwash, were Repagulwash, were the people of the chips of the different, the tiny islands throughout the Micronesia. Re Matau, Matau is the deep sea. Matau, deep sea. So it's Re Matau, and that's, we also identify with Rematau. That's the people from, if you're from the mainland Chuk, for example, main, the, the Yap proper, Ponape proper, or the main, the bigger island in, in the Micronesian, their languages are totally different. There are some similarities, but when it comes to the Repagulwash, the Carolinian, we know their language, but it's difficult for them to understand our language. So I can talk to our Ponapean relative from the outer island of Ponape. They can they understand Ponapean. I don't, but we can communicate. Understand each other. Yeah. So in essence, a, a long time ago, we were like the cell phone. We were the communication, we were the link in between the different islands toward Micronesia were the one who brings in information. Because of our ocean voyaging because of culture. Who we are. Mm. We're Ramatau, Repagalur. So speaking of language, which is the number third pillar, the first being land or ocean, right. the people and language, um, the word, there's a particular word uh, in Caridinian, wa. And some people may be familiar with uh, that as to mean canoe, right. but there's also another meaning for wa. Right. We have a lot of <coughs> synonyms. Um, means the same, right? Wa, like the vessel, the sailing vessel, because even in the Polynesian or a lot of Pacific uh, entities, Pacific Islanders, they use that in, I think, Hawaii, they call it Va, even in the South Pacific. Mm, that sounds like Wa, actually. That's Wa. Yeah. That's the original words. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at the very basic uh, things like like the sun, right, the related words, because those are very common throughout our region, the island. But Wa is, you know, at least for us, it's Wa is the, the blood vessel the veins that we have in our in our body and there's a reason so why it became oh how come th- those are the same words because what would happen if you have an injury to your to your veins and so it's in in essence when you when we're talking about going voyaging preparing yourself 
getting there and coming back, preparing either you, you prepare yourself to make sure you come back, then you have to take care of your your, your body and then you go through a, a process to, to like prepare yourself to for voyages. But why basically is the veins that we have in our body. As well as the word for canoe. As the, as well as the words in canoe. And they're they're like they're like the they're like our mother. And then we can transit into Shabut, the women. The word women. Sha are like the family. Sha it's like the people of, the or people of. yeah, those guys right. <laughs> in colloquially. Shralia, <laughs> Shral Marianas, Shral Japan. People, people of the Marianas. Of Marianas. Okay. But it, it, it basically is a communal Sha. And that's why in our language, the, the, the definition of women is Sha But. But, but means constant. You're, you're always constant taking care of the family and that's why we're matrilineal and that's why it that's the role of the women <coughs> who takes care of the Sha Lev Sha the family <coughs> as it is with the Wa so we have a lot of syn syn synonyms mm -hmm. that are same words but different different what's it What's it the meaning? Different meaning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one more quick example about how language uh, relates to us as a, as a ocean people. I understand that even the parts of the canoe have names that tell a legend with a, a, a shall we say, a moral something that the canoe builder wants the other people who are learning canoe building from him to know. So they learn the names of the the parts of the canoe, which actually is a is a lesson in life. It's uh, a lot of it are spiritual, and so it really depends on the, the the builder, and then even the different parts of canoes. You also have to seek the different clans that are associated to the material that you need for that canoe. And so you also need to ask permission from those different clans. Uh, to harvest the material. To har mm -hmm. Basically to harvest mm -hmm. the materials and to collect all the things that you need. But it's always within the, the family. But anything outside that that we don't have, then then you have a, another extension of that that you also not need to ask permission. Uh, there are times where, you know, Mother Nature floats a lot out there in the ocean and then it so happens to land in your beach. Now, who would have a say that, hey, that, that's mine? So it, it becomes a communal thing, it's a family thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like the chief now will have to determine that who finds it. But that log itself, is very spiritual. So you don't just take, okay, that's mine, because there's, there's, that log has somehow uh, floated out there for many, many years, and so you have to also have that spiritual connection to it. So even building a canoe and that the builder who has that uh, power also has to have that knowledge to seek permission. Like when you cut down trees to make your canoe, you have to ask permission to the tree, the spiritual part of it. You cannot just go there, oh, that's a good tree, let's go and cut it down. You have to ask permission. We're talking tradition today, but we also want to tie in its application to the modern world that we live in, and we will do that after this break. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Bulaguinahanya Puri Historian Marianas Zan Kutura. Sinyon Soda SCCN and Futmashon Giz on Mami website, nmhcouncil.org. Pat Besita Giyutu, Pat Facebook. 
Kwa Haloku Diferentes Class in Leblu na Sinya Unfan. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Hazuzura Todu e Experiencia and Tautau. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We're looking at some perspectives of the Carolinian or Arfalawash people as an ocean people, an ocean voyaging people with Uncle Ray Tabateb today. Um, Uncle Ray, uh, talk to us about <laughs> uh, how traditional knowledge is or perhaps is not or perhaps should be uh, applied to some of the things we do in today's 21st century world. That's a very broad... I know. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm trying to compress it so that we you know, probably use one example. There's quite a few, but trying to apply it with what we have now. For example, now we're in a modern age, right? And so now you're, you're fixed to a written constitution and what have we. And the application of tradition in, in our constitution is just says, to respect the to, to respect the traditional culture or to the culture of the Chamorro and Carolina in our constitution. It doesn't specify what. But if we're gonna go a little bit specific on for example fishes and all this uh, talks about uh, the conservation area and the monuments and what have we the fact is that we have had with had those practices in place before our constitution. Conservation. Conservation has been a part of us, and that's what I was saying earlier about our body. And so you take care of our body, and then when you ask permission for to cut down the tree for your canoe, when you ask, make sure that you ask permission when you are going to go catch fish, and then sometimes, uh, and Uncle Lino explained it a little bit, right? The first fish you catch, then you put it away as a gift to the spirit of that fish and so that you're safe. So you have conservation that has existed, but now the Constitution or even the federal, pro federal uh, policies has told us that you cannot eat turtle. Uh, one of the funny things that I learned from us is that, so, are you not going to provide me with many cows on this tiny island? Maybe we can here, right? But even if we go out into the ocean, uh, you cannot step on that coral. But within our own culture, it has always been a practice by way of respect to anywhere that you go that you know that you're going to be impacting, setting your foot in there, your feet in there, because you're not, you're not from that part of, the, part of the ocean. And so even when we sail, uh, we use fish uh, within our clan system. For example, you have what we call a pilum, which is taboo. A pil means taboo. It's taboo for me to touch your, to, to touch my sibling's head, but because you're my niece, it's okay for me to touch your head. It's okay for you to touch my my head because I'm your uncle. But on a par level, like my siblings, I cannot do that to touch your head because the head is very sacred. So when we look at the clan on the fish, there are certain fish that a certain clan cannot eat. You know those uh, goldfish mm -hmm. that has red spot on it, on the tail? I just know goldfish, but I... There's different kinds of goldfish. Oh, but okay. <laughs> that's one fish that I cannot eat. Why? Because it's taboo. So other clans can eat it. And there's like the grouper. There are certain clans that cannot eat grouper, but certain clans can eat so what it does is that basically balances off on the consumption the of those species. Right. right. On Interesting. The natural, you know, the life and death mm -hmm. of those species. So it always has that conservation. There are certain times that now because we don't have that system, uh, we have sort of a hidden system and the chief system. There are certain times that the chief said, no, 
no one goes out fishing today. No one goes out fishing. You just cut off. No fishing for the entire whatever. So it conserves it. So even turtles, for example, no, no, no turtles for this month and whatever. So there's always been that those conservation practices that has existed. That now the feds are now telling us that we should not be going there and do this. Cannot eat turtle anymore. This would probably be my final question. Do you feel there, what do you think is the way to balance uh, traditional culture with modern governance? If I'm going to talk about just the Carolinian side, and maybe to some extent the Chamorros, really, I remember one of my uh, language arts specialists said, you know, when you talk about the Chamorro language, that's the most unique language in the world because there's no word else you're going to find Chamorro language. I find that very fascinating. So even with our Carolinian, Rafalawar or Rapagulur, I find that very fascinating because you won't find it anywhere else in the world. So what I think is that this, because we're now in a, in a modern uh, we were well, bound by the Constitution and the laws, right? I think uh, the one of the quickest ways for even our U.S. Congress to identify us to be part of that uh, that so-called native tribes, the definition, the federal definition of the native tribes, we're not part of that. I think that would be one of the fastest ways for us to maintain these practices, the traditional practices that we have. We cannot do those things because it's already bound, we're already bound by the Constitution. We're not sovereign anymore. The only sovereign uh, policy that I see in our system right now, in the CNMI, is Article 12. The rest, we're all federalized. So if we can get that definition of what it defines the Chamorros or Carolinians, by way of that uh, federal definition of native tribes, so that you can practice whatever you can, you can eat salmons and get salmons as much as you can. I think that's one way. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for, I would say, really just um, introducing, um, introducing. These, <laughs> these topics in our yes. chat today because there's a lot more to share. Is there anything else you would like to share as a closing thought before we go? Well, I just like want to thank you, Kat, and I want to encourage really our parents, our, our people, to, to continue the conversation really with their children and with their family, friends, on, on these things that are so uh, valued uh, for them. And I know that, like I initiate, like I started, right, that the three fundamental pillars of people are the public, or the land, the language, and the, and the people. If they, they continue that conversation with their friends and their children, especially, I think that would be very worthwhile and encourage that to all the parents, or all, all our people, really. So, We've been chatting today in what I would call an introduction to the Carolinian people as an ocean voyaging people. Our guest today has been Ramon Angailan Tebetep. This has been your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council.